Hi, beautiful people. How are ya? I hope you're having a great day. So this summer, I had an EMG completed on my legs. It came back normal, which is what I thought it would do. The purpose of the EMG was to determine if I have large fiber neuropathy. That's, I believe, what my neurologist was thinking and why he wanted me to have that done, or for no other reason than to rule it out. But my goal for seeing a neurologist in the first place was to see if I have small fiber neuropathy since it's pretty common in fibromyalgia. The symptoms are so similar to fibromyalgia, the peristenias, the pins and needles, those prickly feelings, those sudden jabs of pain are all part of fibromyalgia but could also be something more. So I just wanted to rule it out, but we'll see. I'll keep you informed. Other than that, I've been feeling pretty well. I started doing aerobics again. We bought a smartwatch, my husband and I, and new cell phones. It was time. And I'm hoping this will keep me on target in doing the exercises that I want to do. I felt like I was starting to gain a little weight and bloat up. I was starting to eat things that I shouldn't be eating, not sugar. I haven't strayed that far, but, you know, a little sour cream here and there is okay as long as you don't have a reaction to it. But I was eating crackers and sour cream dip probably once a day, and a little bit too much. So I felt like I was really starting to bloat. Not a good thing. So I'm on a war path again to get myself under control. It's a vicious cycle. And you have to stay on top of these things because you know, we're human and we can get out of control. Twice this week, I have done a 20-minute workout. My goal is a 20-minute workout three times a week, and I think it's doable. I found a wonderful YouTube channel that makes the aerobic exercise fun and easy to do. It's not standing, sitting, laying down. Oh, all that up and down is just too hard for me. I know my limits. So just standing and just doing some fun movements is what I like to do. It's my cup of tea. What do you like to do? And just after the very first aerobics exercise that I did, I mean, my upper back felt enormously better. And even just sitting here, I'm finding myself easily sitting up straight and not wanting to slouch. That's been my problem. And then that slouching leads to back pain right across the middle back here. Not fun, and it can be very painful. And I think it's also helped my stiff neck. Um, my neck even feels better. The only negative thing, I mean, other than doing a workout and with any workout program, you're going to have a little pain reciting later, but I make sure that I rest and relax afterwards and stretch pretty good, but my feet hurt afterwards. And I'm hoping that over time, that's going to start to feel better and maybe not be so painful on my feet. So we'll see. I'll keep you informed. I hope you watched my 34-minute video on me getting some things done. I know it was long. Believe me, it took me four days to edit it, but those were projects that I had done over several weeks, not like over days. And I just wanted to share with you that it is possible to get some things done 
around your house when you're not in a flare. Don't try it when you're in a flare. That's when you need to rest. Did I believe that was possible 10 years ago? Absolutely not. Uh, but over time, I have worked up my endurance and stamina, and it's changed my life. Being positive is definitely a big deal. I still have flares. I mean, that's never going to change as long as I have fibromyalgia, I imagine. And this last flare lasted several months while I was taking care of my ill dog. But I got through it. We do get through our flares. They're just a part of living with fibromyalgia. For today, I want to talk about the action of neutrophils on fibromyalgia pain. I'll explain what neutrophils are, what the common symptoms and conditions that affect neutrophils, and what research is saying about neutrophils in fibromyalgia. So here we go. Neutrophils are a type of white blood cell in the body. They help our immune system fight infections and heal injuries. Neutrophils are a subset of one of the three types of white blood cells called granulocytes, but they also exist in eosinophils and basophil cells. Here's how it works. White blood cells that are mature and ready to take action are released from the bone marrow. The mature cells are our neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. They will travel through the circulatory system our lymph nodes, and tissues to watch for an attack on our system by an illness, infection, or disease. Neutrophils are first on the scene. They're super important. They will capture and destroy an invading microorganism or bacteria or virus and ingest them. Mm. Yes, that's what they do. They eat them. A battle ensues and our body reacts with inflammation and swelling and redness. Then neutrophils will begin the process of tissue repair, healing the injury or damage. Pretty cool, huh? These fighters make up about 50 to 80% of all white blood cells in our body. The number of neutrophils in our body needs to remain constant and in a specific range to keep our body functioning normally. A too high or too low of a neutrophil count can result in an acquired condition. If you have an infection, inflammation, injury, leukemia, or have a reaction to a medication, your neutrophil count is probably higher than normal. If you are severely burned or suffer a bone fracture, your neutrophil count will probably also be higher than normal. But sometimes an infection can result in a lower number of neutrophils than normal. What can occur? is the body may be destroying neutrophils before your bone marrow can create more. Hepatitis, tuberculosis, sepsis, and Lyme disease can cause low neutrophil counts. But chemotherapy, a bone marrow disorder like leukemia, a vitamin deficiency like B12, folate, or copper, or an autoimmune disease like Crohn's, lupus or RA can also be the culprit. And then there's infections like that coming from thyroiditis can also cause the neutrophil count to be irregular. But stress 
can also cause an increase in neutrophils. Imagine that. And neutrophil count can rise when a patient has gestational diabetes or preeclampsia complications. So there's a lot of reasons for neutrophils to be increased or decreased. Have you ever had a CBC complete blood count or an ANC absolute neutrophil count? These are two ways of checking the health of your neutrophils. Also, a bone marrow biopsy will also determine the health of the cells in the marrow if your doctor feels that is necessary. And I hope all of this made sense to you. And I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, will you share that with us below? And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe. I'm getting so close to my goal. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. These spiders or suffer a bone like that coming from thyroid or pre-eclampsia.